next up, we have Pro Robin Mackay, uh, who's going to talk about project and package management, poetry for robots. Let's make the maximum amount of noise for Robin. Thank you. So, um, hello, I'm Robin McKay, a test automation engineer uh, from the Netherlands. I work for a company called Encore. So, today, robots love poetry. This is great, but I'm all uh, really talking about poetry, uh, which is a, is a Python package, basically. You can find them, just Google Python Poetry, you'll find their site. Um, a lot of documentation there, but I just want to go over like what does it does and how does it help for robot framework, not just Python. Why would robots love it? The basic thing that it ensures that is if it works on my machine, it works on your machine which also means it works on the pipeline. Um, I can't really see any, the hands, sort of, but how many of you have had, like, you run your tests locally, you check them in in Git, they run on the CI, CD, and they fail? A lot of them. Well, failing because of Python versions that don't match? or maybe packages that don't load, yeah. So, poetry does a number of things to ensure that does not ha happen. Dependency resolving is basically um, each library depends on other libraries and packages, or most of them. Now, if you have your project and you pull all these libraries, they might be relying on the same other packages, but they may demand different versions. You might be pulling one package and say, like, well, I work with Robot Framework 3, not updated recently, or then you have another that says, I need four. Now, if you use pip, you can just do that, and it pretends to be working, but in fact you have a conflict, you have a problem. So what poetry does is it checks all these versions and it's like, okay, well, these two don't work together because this requires this and this requires this. So um, it tells you before you can even commit your changes that it won't work. It also does dependency pinning. So what does dependency pinning mean? It registers the exact version of a package that you just installed on your project. What it prevents is that, okay, you run your test, it works, then you commit to Git, and then like next week, it does the checkout, it does the pip install, it pulls the latest version of a package. Now, that could have been an updated version that you never ran with, because you did this a week ago. It got a version, it introduced a bug, and you find the bug on your pipeline because it's not using the same version as you're using anymore. Now, um, pip can actually lock versions, but you need to do extra commands for that, so no one does that in general. Um, Poetry ensures that is this is done. It creates a, a poetry.log file and it just everything, every package, the exact version and where that version was retrieved from. So any other machine will use these exact same versions. Now, next week, next year, if you don't change it. So you're always sure that it's always the same. Um, Python version pinning. If you use poetry, you define the Python version that you're using. So, well, 
myself in the past, I've had a situation where I run it locally, it worked fine, I was just starting at the company, pulled the latest version, like 3.8 or something, but the runner agent was using 3.6. Then you have these packages, and then the packages are like, oh, this is a 3.6, I pull a four-year-old version of this package. Didn't end well. So, also this, it just won't run. If you deploy this to a, an agent that's an older version of Python that's not supported, just not happening, not running, you know, like, the agent is not correct, it's not satisfied. environment isolation. Um, for some people, maybe not a problem. If you're using one repository, working on one project only. But if you have multiple projects you're working on, these all have their own packages that they need. And if you don't do anything special, you just do pip install, it will go into what your global Python installation. And all these packages will be in there, whether or not you define them in your project settings. So if you work on two projects, for one you add browser as a dependency, you install it, and then you go to another project and decide, okay, I use these keywords from browser, and they work, they run on your machine because, well, it can find it, then you deploy it and it's like, I don't know what this keyword is, because it cannot find browser, because it didn't install it, because you didn't define it in that other repo. So environment isolation basically means for every project, every you have your own Python install with the stuff that needs to go in there. So it's all isolated, it's just this little island that goes there. Now that's the basics of what poetry can do for you. But in the same file, the pyproject.toml file, you can do tool settings. Like well, what you just see, RoboTidy and Robocop. So if you have these linter settings, like okay, we should warn for this rule and this, you can put it in a file and everyone working on that project will use the same lint rules the same settings for code formatting, auto formatting. So you ensure consistency of your project between different machine, different users. Python package ecosystem also supported. And it's also packaging and distribution, which means you can build your project and distribute it. Um, and you can use this for resource files. Um, so you can make sort of a Python project that does not really have Python in it, but has resource files, keyword files in it. You can use Poetry to build it, then you can distribute it. Could use PyPy, but you can also make a distribution on GitHub. And then other projects can use that, can just import it like you use any other library, and you can use the keywords. Um, I've made an example repo for this that showcases how this project structure would look. Yeah. You can actually read it. Oh, that's not bad. Um, how you use the basic commands like uh, the poetry inf um, introduction basically, the most important commands, how you build it, how you distribute it, and how you can use it in another repo. So, one minute left, not sure if you time for questions, but that's it, thank you. So. Sorry, but no time for a question. No time for questions. Give a big hand so. to Robin. Yeah.